Shalom, beloveds of the King. This morning, or today, Father is just wanting me to be able to bring a message um, that he actually laid on my heart already yesterday. As I woke up yesterday morning and it was pouring down with rain from the middle of the night um, where I had been awake in the middle of the night spending time with Abba. And Abba really just started to speak to me about the prophetic time and the prophetic season that we are in. And it's important for us to understand where we are. You know, we are not to just go about life aimlessly and we need to understand the seasons and the times because that is what Father wants of us at this point in time is not just to be able to just go about life but to understand prophetically where we are. And this is what he started to show me already even as um, I sent out the message on the second Passover to understand the significance of the time. You know, Father does things in his timing and there's things that he keeps speaking and it's interesting how he speaks it out of the mouth of different prophets and not just one. And as the Father really started to speak to me about Exodus chapter 16 and as it was raining yesterday and it was really soaking and coming down in buckets and it was just this latter rain that we don't normally have at this time of the year. We don't normally go into this latter rain at this time of the year. Father just started to remind me and he said, go and look again at Exodus chapter 16. So if we go and look again at, you know, Exodus chapter 16, we go and we see that they, and they set out from Elam and all the congregation of the children of Israel came to the wilderness of sin. Now that to me spoke volumes because when I saw that the wilderness of sin, that spoke something to me prophetically. Because Father didn't just bring them to any other wilderness, he brought them to the wilderness of sin. Because in the wilderness, our sin is revealed to us. And it's interesting that the wilderness was called the wilderness of sin. Because it's only when we are in the wilderness, remember, when you're in the wilderness, you cannot hide. You cannot hide behind a rock. You cannot hide behind a bush. You cannot hide behind anything. Because at the end of the day, everything is being exposed. You are exposed in the wilderness. And you cannot hide from the Father. You cannot hide and run to hide behind a rock. Because in a wilderness, it's just barren. It's just stones. And it's interesting that he brings them into the wilderness of sin. Because this is a time now when the Father wants to expose to us the areas of the sin that is there in our lives. The areas in our lives that still need to submit. The areas in our lives that still need to be surrendered. Because at the end of the day, we still have much of Egypt that is within us. And be it in our body, be it in our mind, will and emotions, but Egypt is still lurking within us. And we need to, we've learned certain things in Egypt. We've been accustomed to certain things in Egypt. We've been accustomed to being able to do certain things in certain ways. And how I find that we are, so many times we try and bring Egypt into the ways of the Father. So we adapt Egyptian things into the ways of the Father and we bring it in as opposed to trying to lay down the things of Egypt. So that's why you'll get the church that looks like the world, acts like the world, does things of the world, because they want to be like Egypt in order to be able to reach the Egyptians. We don't need to be like Egypt in order to reach the Egyptians. We need to look like the Father and be like the Father, so that the more we are like him, the more we can shine his light for all to see. So... We look and we see because straight away in this wilderness of sin, we start to see the sun rise up with them straight away. And it says, and in the 15th day of the second new moon, after they're going out of the land of Mitzrayim, so we've just had the 15th day, 
Yesterday was actually the 17th day of the second new moon. And the children of Israel said to them, If only we had died by the hand of Yahuwah in the land of Mitzrayim, when we sat by the pots of meat and when we ate bread to satisfaction, for you have brought us out into this wilderness to put all this assembly to death with hunger. Now how many times the Father puts us through a test? And in this test, we gripe and we moan and we complain. And the only reason why this message was so vividly being given to me is because just the day before, it's where I found myself. I found myself in a place of where I too wanted to turn around and say to the Father, this path that you put me on is not always easy and I don't like this and I would like a different way. But you see, we have to embrace that which the Father is in and the place where the Father has us and the things that the Father requires of us. We have to be in a place of being totally surrendered. And that was the word that the Father really gave me last week Friday when he's, I was looking at the river and the Father said to me, climb into the river, my child. Climb into the river. It's not just about the river of life that needs to flow, but it's to climb in that river and allow me to take you in the direction that I have for you to go. Because a river cannot be stagnated. If you take a piece of the river that starts to stagnate, that water actually goes like quite rotten there and it breeds mosquitoes and it stagnates. Because a river is meant to run. It's meant to run. And he says, and when that water is running, and that river is running, there is no effort to it. There's no effort at all. At all. The river just flows. And, you just, and that is how the Father wants us to just flow with him. There's no striving in having to flow with him. He puts things into place. And wherever this river is going to flow, just, be, just know that he's got your best interest at heart. And even in the midst of the storm, and even in the midst of the difficulty that you might find yourself in at the time, if you just allow yourself to flow through the river, the Father will take you to the, to the destination of where he's ordained for you to be. And that will never be a bad place because it's the center of his will for your life. And that is what we need to realize. But you see, when we are in the test and when we are in the trial and when we are going through the process, we have a tendency that we no different to the Israelites. We can speak so much, oh, these Israelites in the desert. We are no different to them because we also gripe, we also moan, and we also complain. And we also want to pray ourselves out of the situation that we find ourselves in because sometimes the tests are hard and sometimes we just get tired. We get tired. And I think that was my problem is I got to the place that I said, Father, I am tired now of constantly, it's one test and then another one comes. And I'm sure that the Israelites, as they were going through this desert, they also were tired. And so they turn around and they say to Moshe in verse 4, and and then and Yahuwah says to Moshe in verse 4, See, I am raining bread from the heavens for you. And the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day in order to try them whether they walk in my Torah or not. Now that spoke volumes to me. Because Abba says to me, We are in a time right now where we need his manna. We need the manna that comes from heaven. We need the bread that's going to come from heaven. And as he's giving us the bread that is coming, he's going to test us whether we're going to be obedient to the level of bread that is being given to us. So if we're getting this revelation of his word and the more of his word we are receiving and we're not going to walk in it, we are being tested. Because we see there, it was whether they would walk in my Torah, they were being, to try them, to test them, you can say, whether they would walk in my Torah or not. So in this wilderness of ours, 
He is going to put us through certain tests to see will we bow to him? Will we be obedient to him? Or will we follow our natural inclination, our natural flesh way? Or will we be obedient to what his word says? But how can you be obedient to his word when you're not reading his word? How can you be obedient to his word when you do not spend time in his word? And this is the stern word that the father gave me yesterday morning as I was spending quiet time with him. With him. He gave me a word. And he said, my child, the time that you are in now, I'm giving you the manna that is coming from heaven. I'm giving you the bread of life. I'm giving you the word that in Mark, Matthew chapter 4 verse 4 says, man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Father. So whose bread are you eating? Are you eating stale bread? Are you eating somebody else's bread? Are you eating from the mouth that comes from Abba Yahuwah? Because he wants you to eat the manna that he's given to you. But let me tell you something. In this wilderness, he put out the manna, but they had to go collect it themselves. It was their job to make sure that they went to collect that manna. Are you taking the time to go and pick up your word and spend time in your word and eat the bread that he wants to give you. Because we are living in a time now that people spend a lot of time in doing many things, but they do not spend time in his word. Now, it's just like if we do not spend time in his word, how do we know who he is? How do we know? You know, when a sermon is being preached, and if you know his word, you quickly able to discern the lie from the truth. You quickly able to discern the deception from the lie. And you quickly able to correct it because the Ruach will bring his word to your remembrance and say that which they're preaching there is not correct. They're preaching it out of context because this is what the word says. So now we are living in a time where we are in such a dangerous time because there's so much information being given to us at the moment that if we do not take time out and spend time in his word, we will be deceived because the Father not the enemy. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 says he is going to give them a spirit of delusion because they believed the lie. So what lie will we believe in our lives that can cause us to become deluded in that one area that can cause us to go in a totally wrong direction? What lie? All because we have not really spent time in his word and spend time with him. We are very busy. And it, the days ahead of us will become more busy. And the devil will make sure that he gets you so busy that you are busy with many things, but you are not going to spend time with him and in his word. It is better to get first hand revelation than get second hand information. And this is what we need to busy ourselves with. And that is why the Father is wanting to really bring us aside because he is saying this is a time now that we need to be able to come away and sit with him. This is a time now that he's saying my people have become so busy. My people know so much about me, but my people do not even put my word into practice. So they keep learning and they keep learning, but they never put it into practice. They keep reaping around them teachers that keep teaching them, but how much of the things that they learn do they actually put into practice? And this is what he was doing. He was going to give them the manna so that he was going to try them whether they would walk in his Torah or not. How profound is giving us the manna and we are getting some powerful manna that is being given to us in these days. But how much of it are we willing to put into practice? Or do we shrug it off? Or do we go back with that word and sit with the Father and say, Father, this word has convicted me, please. Will you work it in me, both to will and to do your good pleasure? Even though this is a difficult word, I know it's in your word. I know you want me to walk it out. I can't really walk it out 
because of my flesh, it's difficult. But Abba, I trust in you that you will work it in me, both to will and to do your good pleasure. Are we in a place like that? And so if we look at John chapter 6, John chapter 6 says from verses 53, And Yeshua therefore said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat my flesh, Unless you eat the flesh of the son of Adam and drink his blood, you possess no life in yourselves. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood possesses everlasting life and I shall raise him up in the last day. Wow. So are we eating the flesh of Yeshua? Now what flesh is it? His word is a light unto my feet. His word is a lamp unto my feet. His word is what I should be meditating on to make my way prosperous. That's his word. If we go look at, just keep your finger there. If we go look at Joshua chapter 1, it's just coming up to me. Let's go look at Joshua chapter 1. What does he say? In Joshua chapter 1 he says, Only be strong in verse 7, only be strong and very courageous to God to do according to all the Torah, not to God to hear all the Torah, but to God to do all the Torah, which Moshe, my servant, commanded you, do not turn from it right or left, so that you act wisely wherever you go. Do not let this book of the Torah depart from your mouth, how important is it that we should be reading these Torah portion readings? Because that is the foundation, the foundational covenant that we need. Do not let this book of the Torah, but I say it goes deeper than just the Torah. At least the Torah gives us a foundation. You cannot be reading all the New Testament scriptures and not have your foundation in Torah because that's the foundation. The two are one. It's from Genesis to Revelation. Do not let this book of the Torah depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you guard to do according to all that is written in it, for then you shall make your way prosperous and act wisely. Now, amazing. We all want wisdom, and we all want to prosper. But what is it that makes a man wise and to prosper? By having to meditate on Torah. But we are trying to acquire wisdom and we are trying to acquire prosperity <laughs> through so many different means. And this is what we do not understand. It's obedience that brings the blessing. The more we become obedient to him, the more he lifts us up and the more he gives us. Why should he give you more revelation when you haven't even put the things that he's given you now into practice, but yet you want him to give you more and more and more, more and more and more, more and more teachings and more and more teachings. But at the end of the day, the very first things that you've received, you haven't even put into practice. It's time that we need to be able to come back to his word. It's time that we need to walk out his ways. It's time that we need to sit and spend time. How do you become like a person unless you spend time with that person? The more time you spend with that person, the more you become like that person. So how can we become more like Abba Yahuwah when we spend no time with him? You become like the person that you spend the most time with. If you're going to hang around evil people who curse and swear, it's just a matter of time that that same language is going to come out of your mouth. If you hang around people that are going to be able to be more speaking about the ways of the Father and the things of the Father, that becomes your passion. That becomes your drive. That becomes what you long to do yourself. So, we need to meditate on his word and then we will make our way prosperous and we will have wisdom. What wisdom do we give people if we do not give them the wisdom of the word? This is the word that brings life. This word brings life. There isn't life without the word. 
So let us continue to read. We read in verse 54, He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood possesses everlasting life and I shall raise him up in the last day. So for us to be able to be raised up in the last day with Yeshua, we really need to be able to be about him and his kingdom. For my flesh is truly food and blood is truly drink. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood stays in me and I in him. Meaning, we need more of Yoshua. We need more of Yoshua in our lives. And how do we know Yoshua lest we know what was pleasing to him, lest we walk as he walked? But for that, we need to study the life of Yoshua through his word. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me shall live because of me. Without Yahushua, we are nothing. Without Yahushua that's come to set us free, we are nothing. Yahushua came to pave the way. Yahushua, throughout, without understanding the purposes of why Yahushua came, without understanding what he did for you in the outer court, what he did for you in the holy place, you cannot go into the holy of holies. Because you need to first come to a brazen altar which he went to. You need to come to a brazen labor in order to be washed. Then from there you need to be able to come and eat from a table of showbread. Then from there you'll be able to come to a menorah which he went to a garden of Gethsemane. We need to go through the process in order for us to be able to come into the Holy of Holies. To be a sweet smelling aroma to the Father. Sweet incense to him. He says, this is the bread which came down from of heaven. Not as your fathers ate the manna and died. He who eats this bread shall live forever. So we need to eat of him. We need to have more of him in our lives. We need to see more of how he walked. More of how he went about th doing things. Not our own preconceived ideas. That we will stand and say, oh, this person doesn't have love. But yet Yeshua called those people brood of vipers. We need to understand how Yeshua walked. We need to understand what Yeshua did. And the more we see his example, the more we see how he did things, the more we learn. But if we do not even study the way he walked and the way he went about doing things, and if we do not even study what is pleasing to the Father by knowing the Torah, then how are we going to be able to know what's pleasing to him? Then if we go look at Hosea chapter 6, because this is what I got with this rain, and this is what the Father was telling me yesterday, which birthed this message that I just wanted to share, just a quick message from what the Father was showing me in terms of the timing and the seasons of what we find ourselves in. And if some of you are in some difficult tests and going through things, it's because the Father has a plan. And the Father is trying to take you through. And the Father is trying to bring you to a final destination. But you see, if you do not have a test, you haven't got a testimony. What testimony do you have unless you have a test? And the test has got to come for the testimony, because we overcome, in Revelation chapter 12, it says, we overcome by the power of the blood and the word of our testimony. So if there's no test, there's no testimony. But there can only be a testimony if we overcome the test. Because if we just grab, moan and complain, we might just be like the Israelites that stay in our wilderness 40 years. And we will never leave the wilderness. We will die in that wilderness because of our attitude of heart. And so maybe some of us, the thorn in our flesh might be a husband. Maybe some of us, the thorn in our flesh might be a job. Maybe there's so many different things that the thorn in the flesh, maybe some of us, the thorn in the flesh might be our children. And that thing causes us sometimes to just complain before the father. But we need to understand the father is working all things together for good for those that love him and are called according to his purpose. Romans, 2 verse, uh, Romans 8 verse 28 says, and so at the end of the day, we need to understand that Father is working on a bigger plan than we can see right now. 
because you cannot see the end product. But you see, that's why he was telling me about the river. And he said, climb into the river. Climb into that river that needs to flow so that I may flow in you and through you and take you in the direction that you need to go. A river just flows and that's what we need to be. We need to be those that are just flowing with the direction that Father wants to take us in. Even if it's difficult in our wilderness experience. Because this wilderness experience seems to be, become just when we think, okay, it's time to raise our head out of this wilderness and then we find that, my goodness, we are definitely in the wilderness of sin because he just keeps revealing more and more sin that is still within us. But praise the Father for Hosea chapter 6 that says, Come, let us turn back to Yahuwah. Now you see, that is where we need to be. Come, let us turn back to Yahuwah. Not come, let us turn back to another thing. No, no, no. Come, let us not go take, turn back to whatever else it is that you turn back to. Come, let us turn back to Yahuwah. For he has torn, but he does heal us. He does, he has stricken, but he binds us up. After two days, he shall revive us. Praise the Father. Even though we might gripe and moan in that wilderness, but in that wilderness, he will give us manna. And he was giving them quail. He was giving them the manna that they needed. But he was going to test them if they were going to be obedient. When he said to them, on the sixth day you collect double. And on the seventh day you are not to collect any. But many of them still went out into the seventh day and went to collect. And he said, how long must I be among you before you will listen to what I say? He tells us to do something, and yet we still do not want to do it. And he says, after two days he shall revive us, on the third day he shall raise us up. So we are in this third day season. We are in the season of the third day where he wants to raise us up so that we live before him. So let us know, let us pursue to know Yahuwah is going forth. Let us to pursue to know Yahuwah. So is that your goal? What is the goal? What is the goal of your life? Is the goal of your life to pursue to know Him? How do you come to know Him? By coming back to Him. Not to run to another thing. But to come back to Him. Is that the goal of your life? Where he said to me, 19 years ago, he said to me, my people don't know me. They come to me with the lists of prayers, but they don't know me. And my commission in my life was get my people to know me. That is my commission. But sometimes to get the people to know him, he brings a difficult message to be delivered. Because his ways are not our ways. And his thoughts are not our thoughts. And I cannot speak the things that come from myself. And I, I really squirm myself at the things that comes my way. Because before you get the message, I do. And I squirm like the worm myself because it's for me too. He says, so let us know. Let us pursue to know. So let us know, let us pursue to know. Let us know, let us pursue to know his Yahuwah. His going forth is as certain as the morning. And now listen to this. He comes to us like the latter rain. Oh, is that not where we are right now? In our nation right now, we are receiving a latter rain. In our nation right now, he's bringing us this latter rain and he's saying, my people, come back to me because the darkness is on the horizon. Darkness is moving in. The storm is almost at the door. And if you do not know me, 
If you have not taken the time to know my voice, if you are not a sheep that knows my voice, how are you going to make the time that's coming ahead of you? You are not going to make it. But right now, he's giving us the latter rain. We are in the time of when he's raining down from heaven his manna. He's raining down from heaven his word to be able to open up his word for us. But we want to read another book and another book and another book and another book. He says, can you just come and read my book? My book has the life that you need. Spend more time reading my book. Because when everything else is gone, the only thing that's going to be left within you is that word because I write it on the tablets of your heart. And that word will be embedded in you and my ruach is the one who brings it up. So we are right now in this time of the latter rain where the father says, and he comes to us like the rain, like the latter rain, watering the earth. He's watering his thirsty people. If you are thirsty for him, now is the time to come and drink. If you are thirsting for him, now is the time for you to come and sit with him and drink from that river of life that he wants to give you that comes only from his throne. He's your shepherd and he wants to be the one to shepherd you. So praise the Father. This is the word that the Father has given me for me to be able to share in this time. Because we have an open heaven right now in this timing that we find ourselves in. We have an open heaven. And in this open heaven, as this rain is coming down, as yesterday I was lying there in the early hours of the morning and this rain was pouring down. So not supposed to be rain at this time. And it was so refreshing to hear that rain. And it reminded me of a poem that I wrote in 2008, in December, in December of 2008, about where Yoshua is enthroned in the storm. And I'm just going to read a portion of it. And it says, As the rain comes down to cover the land, and he rained down that manna from heaven, he rained it down so that they could pick up that manna for themselves. He's raining down his word right now so that you can pick it up for yourself and eat of it and take it in and write it on the tablets of your heart. As the rain comes down to cover the land, so we, your creation, come drink from your hand. Give us water to drink so that we may never thirst as we enthrone you now and put you first. Come rain down and wash away all the impurities in our lives that stand in your way. Is that not in this wilderness of sin? Can we cry out to the Father in this time of this wilderness of sin and say, Father, I see these flaws, I see these impurities, please, will you come in this time of this latter rain, will you come and wash away the impurities that is still there, that is still raising in my life constantly, come and wash it with your blood. Bring your living water to come and wash as the rain falls and penetrates the ground, so we, so we need the rain of your Ruach to create in us a new sound. A sound that comes from your throne, that will vibrate through our bones. As the sound of your presence in the storm, awaken within us the sound of your raging storm. A worshipping people you ordained from the start that will worship you in spirit and truth that comes from the heart. The trumpets are sounding. Messiah is coming. Let us prepare ourselves for your coming. Amen. And this was just this poem that came up to me as this 
storm was coming and the rain was pouring down and I was being reminded that all I wanted to do was to drink of this living water that was coming from the heavens that's washing the impurities in the air and washing the dust off the ground and I needed him to come with that water and wash me and cleanse me from the things that I see that is constantly being exposed in my wicked heart. And that is why we need him. And that is why we need to come and sit at his word. Because only when we see his word, then do we realize he's the only one that can work it in us. So I want to close off with a word that he gave me yesterday morning. And this is the word that he gave as I was sitting with him as the rain was falling And as he was birthing within me already a word that then it got, as it was raining more and more, he then gave me the word that I was then to minister to the people. And and he spoke and it says, my child, come and sit with me. Come and spend your time with me. So many people today do not enjoy my presence. They spend time with their phones, listening to another message. And they think that is spending time with me. To spend time with me is come aside. Is to come aside. Is to come and sit with me. Not telling me all your needs and all your wants and all your complaints. It's to come and sit and listen. Oh, how difficult that is for so many people. Because you have been taught to run busy lives. You do not know what it is like to be quiet and to come away from the noise that surrounds you. But I want to speak to my people in this time, but very few will actually make the time to come away. Because they thrive on all the information, they thrive on all the knowledge of me, yet they will be ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Because they have not surrendered their souls or their flesh. I need people to not only surrender the flesh man, but to surrender their mind, their will, and their emotions. How many people speak what I say to them? Or what other people say to them? They're filled with information. They're filled with other people's revelation and other people's information. But they do not come. And inquire of me. That is why so few really know me. They cannot discern the hour that we are in. Because they are too busy. They are too busy listening to the opinions of men. I want my people now to come aside. I need to speak. I need to direct. I need to show you what I require. Too many people assume. Because they get it from a book or a sermon but not from me. I have said my sheep will know my voice, and a voice of a stranger they will not follow. My children only know my voice. My children only know my voice. And that is going to lead you in the days ahead. When all your technology has been switched off, and you cannot access all that you are used to, all your communication How will you stand? Many of you have a need to be seen, to be heard, to be needed. And that is what feeds your soul man, the pride of life. And that is what gives you your worth and makes you feel good about, and makes you feel good. But that is a false sense of worthiness. The only worth that you need is in me. As I have said before, If I was not to answer another one of your prayers, will you still love me? Will you still serve me? Will you still seek me? I am a jealous Yah. And I want all of you, not just some of you. You give me the leftovers of your time, but I want you to be consumed with me, not with all the things you hear about me. That will not bring you into intimacy with me. I want you to know what is on my heart, how I feel, what you must pray, but in 
But, but in prayer, you don't even ask me. You tell me what I must do for you. Oh, my people, how far you have fallen from where you need to be. In the days ahead, you will truly need to know me. As much deception and opinions of man is running to and fro. And people run with what they hear. And they never ask me. There is so much information out there. And so many people saying, thus says Yahuwah, and I never spoke. So many visions and so many dreams and so little word. I now need you to come back to my word. I have the manna to sustain you. As your body needs the good food to sustain it, so does your whole being need my word to keep you alive. I have said, man does not live on bread alone but on every word that comes from my mouth. Time is running out, and soon the darkness will be upon you. And what have you done in the time of the light? Draw closer to me. I need to fill you with my presence, as only in my presence will you be safe from all that lies ahead of you. Come and walk the narrow path with me. I am calling you now to come closer to me. Come and drink from the river that flows from my throne that is not polluted by the doctrines of man and of demons, but will bring life and life in abundance. Amen.